Good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy week, but all is good here. Um, so let's jump right into this. Um, I, I know we were talking a little bit about this before we started the recording, but a um, couple of the issues I'm hearing for um, for buyers right now is basically they just want to sit and wait and see what happens with the market and with the with the election coming up in months and months away. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about that. You know, the market timing, the market, and how the election actually, um, uh, if it has anything to, to to do at all with real estate. It has very little to do with in, with with real estate because, and very little to do with interest rates. I think the presidents would love to have control over the interest rates, but they don't. It's it's all controlled by the Federal Reserve Board. Um, and the current president of the Federal Reserve Board, Jeremy Powell or Jerome Powell, was appointed by Trump. Um, he was originally appointed to the, the board um, by, Ob uh, by Obama, then like made the president of the board uh, or the chairman of the board by Trump, and he's still there. So this guy has been operating through multiple administrations, and he is... He and that board dictate whether the rates are going to be going up or down. And that's based on all of this economic data. So we can have an election, but that is not going to change who is actually there making the decisions about rates going up or down. And there's really nothing they can do to influence them. Yeah, I mean, it's the employment data. These are the things that, that are actually driving the number and inflation data has has not been kind this week um all inflation data was slightly higher than expected and um so we've seen mortgage rates tick up a little bit but i yeah i, I strongly believe if somebody can buy they should buy rather than trying to time the market right so i saw the inflation data you know we're trying to get to two it, but we're like at 2.99 or 3.1 or something this week. I think we went up a little bit. In we went up a little bit. Yeah. So um, still above three, slightly higher than expected. And yeah, it's. Um, and, and just really quick, remind us what they look at when they were looking at inflation. I know the cost of goods. What what else do they look at? So it they look at it from different different perspective. So it's after the cost of goods, then they look at cost of goods without food and energy prices. Because food and energy prices are, again, not even really controlled by interest rates, so much as weather and uh, shipping um, and it, just global factors that affect the price of oil is going to have more of an effect on energy prices, like the what's going on in the, uh, the with the Houthis. Like if they're shooting at ships and they now have to drive, have to sail an extra just thousands and thousands of miles, that's going to take more gas and add more time and add more cost. So, and not to mention the the weather across the nation and you know the two wars going on that they're trying to figure out if we're going to contribute to anymore. Right. Or not, you know, yeah, the egg situation that was caused by a flu <laughs> that affected the chickens. So it's not. Yeah. It has nothing to do with interest rates. Yeah. It was terrible that eggs are that expensive, but and chicken is that expensive. So, and although the inflation does not have a direct correlation necessarily with mortgage interest rates, it has an influence, right? It does. Yes. And, and mortgage rates are really looking six months out. So what is likely to happen in six months, not what, not what's happening today. Um, and what, what has happened and what's caused rate mortgage rates to go up a little bit is that we're now thinking that the first rate cut is probably or might come in June. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, I wish my little, uh, what do you call the little ball, uh, fortune ball? Yeah. Didn't have a crack in it. So I could predict six months out. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You're so, not Really so, right. so with all of this, you know, um, it's it, like you said, it's never a good idea to try to time the market because, you know, I don't think anybody has a good, uh, a, a really good ball 
that it that really works. I don't either. And I, I think people, I, I think it's good to focus on why, why are we buying a home? Right. We're buying a home for stability. We're buying a home for, there's so many things other than the, the investment piece. Now the investment piece is huge too. Um, and the value of the home over time doesn't have to go up in a straight line for it to be a good investment. Like let's okay. say you know, we go into recession in the next 12 months, let's say. Um, and let's say home prices drop a little bit. You're still living in the house, making the same payment. And then they start going up again. So it doesn't matter that for six months, the home prices dropped if you're going to live in the house for 10 years. And over that 10 year period, the overall trend line is up. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think statistics were in the last 70 years or something like that, home values have only dropped seven times in like four of those times were during the the mortgage crisis back in 2008 to 2010, 11. Um, so just to give an indication of what American home ownership does is you get appreciation. I buy home um, at a very good price and I have such so much equity in it now that if something were to happen to me, I could pull that equity out and easily live on my equity for a while. Yeah, no, that is huge. And I actually was, I was looking at a presentation earlier today. I'm gonna really quickly share my screen um, because it's exactly that. It's the home price appreciation over oh, um, going back to what, 1930. And it has the, so the gray bars are the recessions and you can see in a lot of those recessions, particularly 2008, home prices did go down, but they're currently way higher than they were before that recession happened. So it does anyone, I mean, the only people that were hurt that bought right before the recession and sold relatively quickly. So, I mean, can that happen? Can you have to move for some reason? Yes, absolutely, but it is rare. And most people don't buy homes to only keep them for a couple of years. They buy them, most people keep their homes, what is it, eight to 10 years now? Yeah, yeah, on average, yeah. So if you look at it from that time frame, I think it, yeah, I think it's a good investment. Yeah, I agree. So we have no idea what's gonna happen in the market. Um, we can, you know, project based on history um, but you know, that's just a projection. That's not reality. So trying to time the market, um, is just, you know, you really shouldn't, um, right yeah. now buyers, if they decided to come out and buy, um, there's not as much competition as there will be when the market gets to be hot, first of all, mm -hmm. and we're seeing more homes coming on the market. So there is more, um, to choose from then you know, we still have an all-time low inventory of homes, but there's definitely more coming on. So there will be more to choose from at this point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's never, it's never uh, too early or too late to get pre-qualified, um, but you do want to get pre-qualified for a home mortgage prior to um, starting to look at home. So you know that you're not spinning your wheels and falling in love with a home that you may not be able to afford, or you may be able to afford more home than what you think you, you can. Exactly. So, yep. Knowledge is power. Yep, exactly. So um, you can, people can go to, what's your website to get pre-qualified? Melissacondenza.com. Melissacondenza.com to get pre-qualified. Yep. Um, and then if anybody needs a, a realtor, you know, my number is 469-855-0199. Um, well, I guess until the next time, these, I learned so much every week from you. So I really appreciate that, but yeah. we'll talk again next week and hopefully we'll have, maybe we'll have a different projection than what we currently have. We'll see. I know it's, it's one bad set of data, but unfortunately the market is taking it hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But at least we're not up in, you know, mid sevens, 8% interest rate. We're still affordable and there are still ways to make your interest rate become, you know, in the fives if, if you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And the other thing is 
the other reason that rates haven't dropped is that the economy is doing well. Yeah. So that's yeah. not a terrible thing. There, a lot of people have jobs and people keep spending. So, yep, exactly. Yep. Mortgage rates are a little high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Melissa, and you have a great weekend. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.